Hi friends, and welcome to the ship tour of the Norwegian Joy. If you are new here, my name is Taylor, and I will be doing the partial voiceover for this video while my husband Jake does some live action tour of the Norwegian Joy. We sailed on this ship in October of 2023, and this is our second time on a Norwegian Breakaway Plus class ship. It is quite similar to the Encore, but has its differences. If you're interested in seeing some vlog style videos of our time on this ship, they will be linked below. And if you are looking for tips and tricks, you can find a video all about that in the description below as well. So let's jump right on in and head to Jake the morning of the ship tour. Good morning, friends. It is, well, whatever time it is for you, it's, my phone says 6.30, but we came back from Bermuda last night on our way back to the States and across the time zone, so it's actually 5.30. I'm walking around the Norwegian Joy this morning to set up a bit of a cruise ship tour for you all. These are very helpful for me when planning a new cruise to see where things are located with respect to each other from one floor to the next. So I think we're gonna start aft and yeah, let's start at the bottom of the ship and work our way up. So the first one I'm gonna show you is just as low down on the ship as I can go. Should take me down to about floor four, deck four. Let's start there. Okay, so they're vacuuming over on that side of floor four and I don't wanna, I don't wanna get in the way of what that particular crew member is doing. But typically we go down those stairs on the, let's see, what would that be? The mm, starboard side of the ship. <clears throat> Uh, that's your, it's gonna be your tender deck. That's gonna be where you leave to go to your excursions. Most of the time it is crew access only, but yesterday when we got off of Bermuda, that is where we went down. Let's head up to, uh, well actually from here we are on deck five. So let's head over and see what's deck five. At the moment we are aft. Take a look at a quick map of deck five here. So as you can see here in the aft of the ship, you have Splash Academy. That's gonna be your daycare, your open play time, your open play area for your very, very young children all the way up through uh, te uh, teens and tweens. And then forward of that is more or less just staterooms, elevators, and the stairs. But we'll go and take a quick look at Splash Academy since I'm sure it's not being used right now. So as you walk forward uh, on the first thing you're going to come to is Splash Academy itself. Good morning, hi, no, you're good, you're good. Splash Academy itself, you can say they open at 9 a.m. There's desks inside where you can check in. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see some of the screens that are in there, but your dynamic station is ages five to 12 years. That's sort of what you're going to find in this room. There is another location on the ship that is more for your teenage, kids and then you have as you continue to move forward you get past the wonderful lit up bright eye piercingly blue sign it's for Splash Academy into <clears throat> I think this is we call it guppies and this is just a little area where it's kind of for open play or where they can bring some of the younger, younger kids to uh, keep them entertained we took miles to this earlier in the trip and it was nice just a nice room full of padding and toys and uh, some screens and things like that to keep them entertained but you can take them there for open play they have hours throughout the day just to give them a little bit of time to burn off some energy and that's pretty much all there is to see on deck five because everything else is stateroom so we're going to head up to deck six all right, so at this point, friends, I'm more or less going to stop talking. We'll let uh, Tay take over with a little bit of a voiceover from here on. I just wanted to make sure I explained some of the oddities of the of, of deck four and how to access that and that the um, the areas for the kids were down on deck five, which is more or less the lowest passengers on the ship can go. So we're going to start here from the aft of deck six and work our way forward. Take it away, Tay. Thanks, Jake. We are going to start at this weird little couch room where you can find the model of the ship. And then you are going to head right down the hall, past the elevator bay, 
you'll run into mix bar, which is the bar between two of the complimentary dining options on the Norwegian Joy. The first that we are going to today is on the port side, and this is Savor. It is, as I said, a main dining room that is complimentary. This restaurant balances classic favorites with unique new dishes and offers guests an extensive menu of fresh flavors along with chic and modern decor. Directly across from it on the starboard side, you are going to find Taste. This is basically the same restaurant with a slightly different decor. Here is a quick look at the restaurant dress code for the ship. You can pause this if you want to see more. Now, heading down the center aisle of the ship, you will pass the art gallery where you can look at art that may be up for auction later in your cruise. And coming up on the port side, you are going to find teppanyaki. This is the specialty hibachi restaurant dining on board. Directly across from it, you will find Malting's Whiskey Bar. You can sit right alongside the sea where you'll be able to enjoy a unique international variety of spirits. Leaving Maltings, don't forget to look up at the beautiful chandelier that changes color throughout the night. And right beside the whiskey bar on the starboard side, you will find the social comedy and nightclub. Here you'll find comedians, auctions of that art, and DJs for dancing if you wanna party the night away. Heading down another central hallway, you're gonna to head towards the atrium. The first thing you will come to is the atrium bar where you can grab a drink and enjoy a show or just relax in the internet cafe. Right beside the atrium bar, you're gonna find your first Starbucks location for those coffee needs. And continuing on the starboard side, as I mentioned, you will also find the internet cafe here. If you're having issues with your internet connection on board, you can find help here, or you can use their computers as well. Past the internet cafe, you'll find Perspectives, which is the photography studio where you can book a session if you are interested. Coming more central in the atrium, this is going to be an area where you're gonna see shows, find presentations, and enjoy entertainment on this giant screen. On the port side of the atrium, that is where you are going to find the shore excursion and guest service desk if you have any issues that need to be addressed. Also on this side, you're gonna find the chess card room, which is more of just a little seating area, and the cruise next desk if you are interested in booking another cruise while you're on your current one. Leaving the atrium, you will go past another bay of elevators, which is going to lead you to Q Texas Smokehouse. Here you can dig into some authentic Texas barbecue. All of their smoked meats are infused with delicious flavors and come with all of the traditional sides. This is another specialty restaurant that you will need reservations for and cost extra. Behind Q on the starboard side, you will find some meeting rooms and the library and card room. This is in a little sideways nook, so you kind of got to wind your way around to find it. But the library, you're gonna find plenty of books that you can read while you are cruising, along with some games and some puzzles if you are interested. And here's a little look at a meeting room if you've never seen the inside of one before. I know I've never had a reason to go into one, but there were meetings taking place while we were on board, so it does happen.
And remember, if the elevator bays are extra busy, you can sneak this way around to get into the atrium. I know I did that on a few days when I really needed my Starbucks in the morning. Heading up from deck six to deck seven. So aft, deck seven, this is where you have the ability to exit on to, it's one of the areas that I think you come in on when you embark. This is where the lifeboats are. Forgot these are not pushed, you have to put the little thing on the side. But nothing really to see out here other than the lifeboats themselves. There's no real good seating areas or anything like that. center on deck seven, you are going to find your third complimentary dining room, the Manhattan room. This is very, very similar to taste and savor, though I felt that it always was a little bit more fancy. And on our sailing, it opened up for dinner a half an hour earlier than the other two dining rooms. And on either side of the Manhattan room is Pretty much the same. You can exit these doors where the lifeboats are. I don't think there's anything more on this side than there was on the other. Hopefully nobody has to go to the lifeboats on this side of the ship because they're out of luck. All right, real quick shot of the casino. They don't particularly like you filming in here, but nobody's really doing anything right now. So smoking area on the right, bunch of slots whole bunch of other stuff there. There's also some card tables as you come towards the more center on the ship. Uh, a cashier, ATM, bill changer, all manner of things. Of course, none of that is running right now. But uh, they do have the Players Club in the back as well for those who would consider yourselves high rollers. Moving past the casino, you are gonna come to the local. This is another complimentary dining option, but this one is going to be open 24 hours a day. It offers classic pub fare in a relaxed atmosphere and even has seating overlooking that central atrium so you can enjoy all the presentations, entertainers, and games that they have down there. On the starboard side, you are also going to run into this little mini arcade. From the local, if you come through the um, little arcade that's there, which is not the big arcade on the ship, but there is a little arcade there, this will take you to the box office and into the Joy Theater which is, I guess, the entire forward portion of the ship here, more or less, on deck seven. So that's all there is for deck seven. Let's head up to deck eight, where you start to get into a lot of the uh, other restaurants, the specialty dining more bars, things like that. Okay, back to me. On the central side of Forward, you are gonna come to the Food Republic on the starboard side. This is a delicious Asian Latin fusion cuisine served tapa style restaurant that is one of our favorites on board. It is a specialty restaurant, so you will have to pay extra, but if you're interested in seeing our experience, I will put that video up in the eye in the corner. On the port side, you are gonna come right to the District Brew House. This is a lounge that specializes in beer with 50 different bottled beers or 24 different ones on draft. This is definitely one of our favorite locations and that's not just because Jake likes to have a good beer. You will also find a few rooms on the eighth deck all forward. Here's in general what you have up on deck eight. Lots of good stuff, specialty dining, the district brew house, and one of the really wonderful things is the waterfront, which you just saw I tried to get through one of the doors outside, but <clears throat> they have it closed for some reason. So we'll go out a little more center or a little more forward so you can see at least uh, what, the, what the outside looks. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see because it's 
well, still pretty dark out, but we'll give it a shot. So, as we move more towards center on deck eight, you're going to come through La Cucina and the cellars. La Cucina is the, well, more or less the Italian place on the ship. I haven't eaten there yet. Uh, the cellars is the wine bar. They do events here throughout the cruise, wine tasting, wine pairings, really fantastic events. And Ocean Blue, this is the seafood restaurant aboard Norwegian Joy. Actually, the, the seafood restaurant aboard a lot of the Norwegian ships, that's sort of a Bayer seafood restaurant. But we'll just take, we'll take a minute here to see if we can get out onto the waterfront. Looks like we can. Hopefully we don't get caught in this airlock. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump in here so you don't have to listen to the insane wind noise. We had really rough seas on the day we were filming this, if you hadn't caught on already. But know that on the waterfront, you can find El Fresco dining for many of the restaurants, along with outdoor bar locations as well. Here's a look at what you can expect from the waterfront during the day. And of course, this is usually much more packed with people and the seating is actually facing the sea. But as I said, the weather was pretty terrible. So this was not utilized on our last day of the cruise. Also next to the Ocean Blue restaurant, you can find the Humidor Cigar Lounge. You can bring one of your drinks in here and enjoy it with a smoke if that is something you are interested in. A little dark look at the waterfront outside of Ocean Blue. Like I said, we'll hit that again maybe, uh, maybe on the way back down <clears throat> once it lightens up a bit after I go through the buffet and show you that before it gets too busy. But as we move more forward on deck eight, you come again to the second level of the, this uh, beautiful, I guess technically this is the third level. Yeah, it goes all the way from six all the way up to seven. You see, you can just see the casino down there in the local all the way up to deck eight. On either side of this, you have Sugar Cane's Mojito Bar on one side, Cavern Club on the other side, and Sand Bar on this side, which is sort of like, oh, it's a little shop they have electronics, well, pastries and things like that, snacks, chocolates. You also buy tobacco products and liquor here. Yep, so there's a quick look inside Sandbar. Now the Cavern Club and Sugar Cane Mojito Bar are another two of those staples on Norwegian ships. The Cavern Club is, of course, where the Beatles impersonation band plays practically every night if they're not in the main theater. You can see they're set up over there, and that is always a good time, especially if you're a Beatles fan, or even if you're not. They're a push, Jake. They're always a push. Across from the Cavern Club on the starboard side, you are going to find Sugarcane Mojito Bar. Here, you're going to find, you guessed it, mojitos, along with any other drink you may want. And they often had live entertainment here as well. One of our favorites on this style ship. We are quickly going to move through the trade winds area. This is where you're gonna do your shopping. Jewelry, sunglasses, high-end retailers, you name it, you can find it here. Remember, this is all tax and duty free, so you can often find some pretty good deals. night huh yeah all been there as you come aft on deck eight you come to the bistro on one side and Cagney's on the other that is your French and 
steak restaurant for the Norwegian Joy. Walking down the main corridor, the first thing you will come up to is the A-list bar. This is a great spot to stop and get a drink if you are dining at one of the two restaurants. The first we're gonna show you is Le Bistro. This is another signature restaurant that you will have to pay extra for, but it does serve French cuisine if that is something you would like to try on your Norwegian cruise. On the other side, you're gonna find Cagney's Steakhouse. Here, you're gonna find premium cuts of certified Angus style beef. Again, this is another signature dining experience, which does cost extra. That's more or less it for deck eight. Uh, I'm not gonna really talk too much about decks nine through 12 because those are all staterooms. Just a little hint if you're trying to navigate what is forward versus aft on the ship. The carpets have these fish on them and they do swim towards the forward, uh, or rather they'd swim forward on the ship. Okay, so we'll keep heading forward, follow the fish, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. I think this is a really interesting look at just how long these hallways are. This ship is humongous and to get from one end to the other is gonna take you time. Keep that in mind. Center on deck 13. If you come down either the elevators or the center stairwell on deck 13, it will bring you right out at the uh, door to the medical center. Here are the hours for the guest clinic hours. Of course, if you do have an emergency, you can dial 00 from your stateroom. Uh, or pardon me, if you have an emergency, you can dial 911 from your stateroom or for non-emergent cases, 00. Here's a, just a quick look at some of their services. Hopefully you'll be able to read this out get as close as I can. And costs. Only $800 to be resuscitated. All right, so that's all for deck 13. Again, nine through 12 are all staterooms, so no need to go there. Let's head to, yeah. Actually, 14 is all staterooms too. I don't know why they have that one separated. So let's head up to deck 15 where we will find the other Starbucks and uh, maybe I'll get my first coffee of the day there, as well as the observation lounge and hopefully find a place to drop off this little guy. Now we are up on deck 15. If you watched any of our Alaska cruise series on the Norwegian Encore, you will know that the Observation Lounge was one of our absolute favorite spots on the whole ship. And it was similar on the Joy. This is, as you can expect, a lounge that does offer some light food, but the most impressive part is all of the comfortable seating and the fantastic views. Oh, Jake's hiding a duck here that he found. As you can see, there are windows wrapping the whole way around, but just wait until you get all the way forward. I do have to mention that after the Joy's dry dock in January 2024, 24 new balcony straight rooms will be added, replacing part of the top deck of the observation lounge. You can tell it's starting to get just a little bit busy here as people wake up and get their day started. The observation lounge is a very popular place to come and see from the forward point of the ship, the very front of the ship, out these massive two-story windows that go all the way ceiling to floor. Across that 15 and 16, it's a great spot to sit, get some coffee, get a snack. There is a bar here as well. Here is a look at the bar and a little bit of the food offered first thing in the morning. Again, we really, really enjoy this area of the ship, but it gets busy pretty quickly, so make sure you Get there early and grab your seat if you want to spend some time there. They have pastries and basic breakfast options in the morning, and then it switches out to sandwiches and different desserts for lunch.
And of course, I said first Starbucks earlier, and that's because here is where you're gonna find your second Starbucks location too. Heading up one floor right above the observation lounge, you'll come to the Garden Cafe. This is another of your complimentary dining options, and this is gonna be your buffet. You can eat here for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all those snacks in between. Okay, so as you can see, it's still pretty early. They're getting things set up. There's not a ton of people here right now. They have uh, some of the beginnings of their breakfast set up here. Incidentally, this is where if you want to utilize the wine stations at any point throughout the day, you can. However, these are not included in your drink packages. You do have to pay for each of those little wine dispensers. They have plenty of chairs and seating not yet being utilized. I think people are still trying to adjust to the time series a little bit. But this is the one opportunity I think you're going to have to actually see the Garden Cafe without hello. people. Hello, how are you? And everybody in here has been so pleasant, uh, especially with uh, with our son Miles. It's just uh, they smile at him, they entertain him, they you know do things behind us to make him laugh, and uh, they're just very very pleasant here in the Garden Cafe. One of the best parts of the Garden Cafe, right here. Mm. And then this is my favorite part, as you come around to the back. You're never gonna see it like this, but if you come early in the morning, this back, which is actually, I guess, the forward of the ship, but the back of the Garden Cafe, has plenty of seating. It's got its own bathrooms. It's close to the ice cream machines. You can see out the observation deck windows. Pardon me, the observation lounge windows. It's got it all, folks. It's got it all. Come here. I guess I should say for breakfast anyway. Generally the sides are the same, so your your port side of the ship is gonna be more or less the same as your starboard side of the ship. You'll always find things like cereal and yogurt. You'll always find your cold breakfast items, your fruits, your pastries, your breads, things like that. As you get a little bit further back, of course, you'll have your hot breakfast, which is more in the center of the buffet. That's gonna have things like your eggs, your omelets, your sausage, your pancakes, your waffles, your bacon. Um, corned beef, hash, potatoes, all manner of things is, in my opinion, one of the better breakfast buffets that, uh, at least that I've had on a cruise ship, at least that I remember having on cruise ships. They do it pretty well here. The food in the complimentary dining areas, especially the buffet, has uh, really been pretty impressive this trip. So heading back out of the Garden Cafe, moving more center on the ship, the first thing you're going to come to is the elevators, and once you pass through the, the bay of elevators here, you get right out onto the pool deck, which I think is going to be very hmm, sea spray-y, windy. <laughs> we'll see how well those barrier windows do, keeping out the sea spray, but um, as you can see at this point, they've cleared off all the chairs and everything that would normally be sitting here in the middle. It's a great shot of the... Uh, area you can see just how big it is though believe me once they fill this area with chairs and it's full of people who are either watching things on the screen or just sunbathing it does not feel this big but there's a stage here there's a lot of music that plays throughout the day all right i'm gonna pop in again to save you from that awful sounding wind but here is a look at what to expect the pool deck to look like on a sunny day this was embarkation which is a little more chaotic but it gets insanely busy. Back to our bad weather day. You're gonna find two pools on the pool deck. They are kind of catty corner from each other. This ship was actually built for an Asian market and didn't have pools. So they had to fit them in where they could find room when it was changed when it came to the States. There's also a kid's aqua park here. It is like a little splash area with kid-friendly slides and it's pretty adorable. 
heading past that to the stairs and heading up to the 17th floor, you are gonna come to the gym, which is called Pulse Fitness Center. Here you're gonna find treadmills, free weights, different machines, and you can also take classes here, usually for a small fee. Ironically, right next to it, is American Diner. This is another specialty restaurant that costs extra, but this is gonna be your little slice of Americana where you're gonna find burgers, french fries, you know, all of the classics. Stepping away from the diner, you're gonna come to the Aqua Park. These are gonna be the entrances for the two water slides. The first is the Ocean Loops, which is a pretty intense slide that Jake tried because he's very brave, but it goes out all the way over the side of the ship. And the other is the Aqua Racer. This one is a tube slide that you can go one to two people down. And I did this one and it was pretty fun and super adorable, definitely recommend it ping pong table set up that looked to be absolutely thrashed by the wind. Right, so here's your deck 16 aft elevators. Bring you right to the Galaxy Pavilion, which may or may not be open yet, but we'll take a look. I am not going to talk about the Galaxy Pavilion because the ship will be going into dry dock in a little more than a month from now and replacing the Galaxy Pavilion will be a brand new thermal suite. It will be the largest of the Breakaway Plus class ships and is going to replace the entire pavilion. Also on the 16th deck is the Mandara Spa and Salon. Here you can find plenty of ways to be pampered. You can get all kinds of treatments, hot stone massages, facials, pedicures and manicures, along with hair services as well. We are heading back up to deck 17 where you're gonna find Spice H2O. This is the adult only area that is included on the Norwegian Joy. In the day, you can enjoy a cocktail on a lounge chair, watching the sea go by. And by night, it's a completely different experience with dancing beneath the stars. These upper decks on the Joy can be a little bit confusing, but do know that a lot of decks 17 and 18 are completely dedicated to the Haven. We don't have a ton of information about these, but if you search them on YouTube, you can find everything that they're about. Up to deck 19, you'll come to Vibe Beach Club. This is another adult only area, but this one you will have to pay for. The passes are available for pre-purchase or on board at the guest services desk. Like the Galaxy Pavilion, I'm not gonna talk about the Laser Tag Arena because after the dry dock, this area will be going away and will become an expanded part of the Vibe Beach Club. This space will have a similar layout to the one found on the Norwegian Encore and the Norwegian Bliss, which will include all new private Lux Cabanas. Because of the bad weather, there were a few areas that Jake couldn't get to during his tour on our last day at sea, but that we had visited earlier. The first is the mini golf course. This is on deck 19 and you can play nine holes of mini golf with different obstacles. And honestly, this was really hard and I learned I'm not very good at mini golf. Also on deck 19 is the Joy Speedway. Here for an extra fee, you can zoom around hairpin turns as you race for the checkered flag. You can only drive a race car at sea on Norwegian ships. And if you wanna do this, book it early because you don't wanna be like us and have it canceled on your last day because of weather. Up on this area too, there is a really nice deck that generally doesn't have a ton of people that overlooks the raceway and we enjoyed our time up there. We hope that this video has helped you learn all about the Norwegian Joy. It is going under refurbishment very soon, so know that if you are watching this in the future, some of the areas may look and be different. Make sure to check out our tips and tricks video to learn more about this cruise ship and subscribe because we will be sailing on another ship with a different cruise line soon. We can't wait to bring you all kinds of content from that trip as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay magical.